Right guys, on this one I'm going to be showing you how to drive in the night. So let's just get straight into it. It's quite dark. Um, first thing you want to make sure you do is turn, once you've got the engine on, turn the lights on. So my control is here. Turn that to the headlights. So we don't want the full beam, we just want the normal dipped headlights. Uh, the full beam will, will um, dazzle other people, make them not see the road properly. My windows are a bit watery. Uh, so I'm just going to clear them by opening them up and closing them again because it is kind of cold. And if you want to as well, you can, if you've got tissue, just give your mirrors a little wipe just so you can have better vision of the mirrors because of when it's dark, your visibility is very poor. So you want to do what you can to make sure you can see as much as you can. And then my windscreen is a bit watery as well, so I'm just going to give that a, a wipe. And then the back as well. Okay, so let's go for a drive. Seatbelt on, I'm just going to come out of this parking space. Checking my mirrors here as I'm coming out, checking over my shoulders as well. I'm coming out really slowly. So I want to make sure that I don't hit that car in front. Just going to do a quick turn in the road here. Just stop checkers around me first. Look around, looking for pedestrians as well. Because when it's dark like this, it's going to be very difficult to see and I can't really see the pavement in this mirror like I normally would do during the day. Um, so for parking, it's a bit tricky, but I'm going to show you how to do that near the end of the video. So watch out for that. Keep, look, keep watching to see how I park in the dark. So as you can see, it's, not, it's very, very low visibility. I can just about see this guy's lights and there's not much room for us. I'm just going to wait here. Check our mirrors before I move on. And some of these streets are very poorly lit, so you won't see much. And people wearing dark clothes as well, like this pedestrian here, for instance, they're harder to see. Uh, as you get to the bigger roads, like this, it's a bit easier to see because it's a bit more lit. And people's lights are coming from that side as well. Checking the side I'm turning into. So as you can see, it's quite a heavy flow of traffic and just keep looking out for the lights that are coming from that side. And then once I decide there's no more lights coming on, I'm gonna double check again to make sure that there's no one coming down without their lights on, which sometimes happens. Or there could be a cyclist without his light. So like the cyclist, see his light is very dim. I might not be able to see him. I'm just open my window as well, because I can't really see him. I can open my window a little bit. It's not raining, which is just to make sure I can see better. I've got my window open. And then the cyclist is in my way. So I'm gonna make sure that sometimes when people get in the way like this, you can't really see what's going on. I think you heard me talking. Very busy. I think after this van is looking good. Let's double check again and it's looking okay. Then I'll make my move. So sometimes when it's busy like that, or if you can't really see properly, you might want to open your window a bit just to get a bit of view what's going on on that side there. Yeah, sometimes other cars will get in the way of your view or cyclists. If you can't see, just wait until it's clear or wait until they've moved out of the way. Luckily, that guy moved out of the way a bit for us so you can see more around him. But whenever you can't see, don't guess. Just wait until you're 100% sure that it's safe to move out and then double check again as you're moving. So we're looking for going towards Brent Cross. So I'm just keeping to this side. And floor markings are not going to be as visible when it's dark as well. I'm going to check my mirror because I need to go to the left lane. So lanes are not going to be as easy to see unless you get to a more a well-lit area like coming up to now. 
So now the sign is saying we can do 40 miles an hour. So in some ways it's easier to drive in the dark because you're when people got the lights on they're much easier to see. So you can see lights from before you even see the car coming from the, from the different directions. So in, in, in one sense it can be a bit easier but then you won't see pedestrians as easily, you won't see floor markings as easily and your eyes are working harder because it's dark because there's, there's not much light so it takes more concentration. So I'm using the reference point it will still be the same even though it's dark it's not going to be as visible because the lines a bit faded then especially with the wet floor as well but the reference point is all the same on the dual carriageway for keeping in my lane the the line on the right that is just in the corner of my windscreen and I'm keeping the same distance as I would when I stop so I can make sure I can see this guy's tires touching the floor so most tests you're not gonna get tests in the dark really so this is just for people that are you know you have driven already or gonna do lessons in the dark or just once you pass your test you want to know how to drive in the dark but on your test it's very unlikely that you're going to do a test in the dark you might get one really early in the morning it's let's say seven when it's coming up to um when it's sunrise but it won't be this dark I'm trying to keep a safe distance between me and his van in front of me so i'm constantly checking my mirrors as well to see who's next to me so I can go around this van if I wanted to but at the moment it's look, looking like everyone's going the same pace anyway so I'm just going to keep behind him and when you turn your lights on as well they put your back lights come on so you see these guys have got their red lights that's just the, when the lights are on so that even your little side lights when, they turn, when you turn those on those lights come on at the back as well and you want to see the difference between these lights and brake lights I'll show you in a second when his van brakes so right now he's just got his normal lights on but when he brakes it's going to be much brighter than this uh, which, you, which is what you want to be paying attention to because when he brakes you want to be able, you want to be braking as well so that you don't get too close so hopefully he's going to brake for this red light coming up now it might stay it might be green actually I'll show you what I mean in a sec because it looks like there's a bit of traffic up ahead. So like now these lanes are merging together. Uh, this guy is going to go past. There's a little arrow showing me that the lanes are merging together. I'm just checking my mirror for any more so you see how he's braking so his lights have gone bright and then now they're just a bit dim so that's the difference between the brake lights and then just normal um, rear lights turn my wipers off it doesn't need to be on it's not raining in so when lanes are merging that's why you want to make sure you check in the mirror to make sure there's no cars coming at the last second uh, joining the space that you're driving in as well So in the dark you want to be looking mainly for like cyclists, pedestrians, uh, you know, you shouldn't get too many like school kids at this sort of time. Uh, sometimes you do because uh, during like, you know, deep winter the schools close and then it starts to get dark. But normally you're looking just uh, pedestrians that might be stray or cyclists who haven't got their lights on or haven't got any lights. Sometimes they ride around with no lights. So you see here it's very dark, I'm just going to check my mirror because I need to be on the left side. So right here it looks like the lights are not working, so it's very, very dark. Uh, in sections where it's really dark for a long, long, um, for a long stretch, you probably want to put your full beams on. Uh, especially when there's no other cars around right now this stretch with no lights is only for a short bit and there's other cars around as well so if i was to put my full beams on right now i'll dazzle the car in front of me the mirrors will just be full of light and they won't be able to see properly what's going on 
behind and maybe even in front because they'll be so blinded by the light so here the lanes are merging into a different uh, road here so I'm just following this line here just checking my mirror as well make sure that I stick to this lane that guy sticks to that lane sometimes there people get confused what lane they're going in so you want to just keep checking the mirrors to make sure no one's going into the same lane as you are And most of the times in the mirrors as well, in the, in the daytime, you can see clearly like what car's behind you, uh, what person it is as well, what they're doing. But right now, all I can see is just lights and a bit of their bonnet, uh, which is enough to be able to decide what you're doing. And you don't need to see too much when it comes to cars. All you, can, all you need to see really is their lights and that should show you how far um, they are, how close they are to you. So I'm seeing a flashing orange light up ahead, so remember those, whenever you see flashing lights, start paying attention because something is usually happening there. So I'm just slowing down in case uh, it's something I need to be wary of. I think it's like a broken down lorry. Yeah, there's a bro broken down lorry there, it looks like. There's people trying to go around him. So it's still 40 miles an hour, I'm just keeping my... my in the left lane here, which is the normal driving lane. So on the dual carriageway, you're not gonna, you shouldn't expect to see like pedestrians walking around and stuff because uh, they don't normally walk around on, on uh, dual carriageways. So it's a bit easier to drive around here. It will be harder like around high streets or places where there's a lot of pedestrians. That's where you need to be paying a lot of attention. Because here it's nice and easy because you've got a reference point but on the side roads which I'll show you in a bit uh, sometimes it's hard to see where the road actually ends and where the pavement begins so everyone's braking so a lot of a lot of bright red lights there so I start braking as well because I don't want to be zooming past all these guys see a bus up ahead there he might pull over soon I'm not sure what um, if there are any bus stops on here but I'm just preparing in case that is the case uh, so I'm checking my mirror on the right I'm checking my center mirror issues behind me as well in case I need to change lanes uh, see people slowing down a bit up front so whenever people are slowing down it's gonna affect you somehow so just be ready for that so this little white car in the middle lane is trying to join this lane which is fine so you want to look out for stuff like that so people trying to join your lane um, just preparing early will help you drive smoother as well and it'd be a lot less stressful because you can kind of see what they're doing early enough looks like people are coming off uh, to the left to go to Brent Cross there but it's very busy on the right here it's gonna signal to see if I can go there's a nice nice space there so I can go past these guys so I could have stayed in that lane if I if I wanted to but I felt comfortable enough to move over to the middle lane to go past these guys because I wasn't sure how long they were going to take to go up that ramp there to go towards Brent Cross. Uh, another thing about the night time as well, some, some things can be very very distracting and very pretty to look at so if you look over there's a nice fun fair going on over there uh, towards the rush shut down but got the nice little sign but don't get distracted by by pretty lights and stuff like that you need still need to focus on what's happening in front if you're the driver always stay focused so you look I'm looking far into the distance looking uh, close to the car I'm looking in the mirror behind me as well to see what's going on uh, behind just having a full picture of everything that's going on around me I'm not just looking just in one place I'm looking pretty much everywhere but my main attention is to the front
lots of red lights there. People are braking here. Probably just to slow down down the hill. There's also a lane, a uh, slip road joining this dual carriageway here. So I'm going to keep an eye on that as well. I'm checking my right mirrors in case I want to move over to the to the middle lane in case there's lots of cars coming from the left but right now it looks like there's no one there I'm just gonna check again as we are as we get close to the slip road and it looks like it's still clear and you can see lots of red lights up there everyone's braking so it looks like traffic's building up so I'm just gonna reduce my speed a bit so you see in the daytime you don't the lights are not as as bright because obviously it's it's too light to see that to see the difference but in the night time it's really visible when people press their brakes so it kind of gives you a bit, a bit of a better warning of what people are doing and it gives you more time to to react as long as you're paying attention to the red lights and people the lights getting brighter uh, you should have enough time to respond to whatever's happening around you especially if you keep a nice distance between you and the car in front as well which is very important So it's an, that's, the main, that's another reason you want to have your lights on as well when you, before you start your drive because uh, when you don't have your lights, so these little, the red lights here at the back, if people can't see you, especially if you've got a dark car on a dark road, it's very easy for someone to go into the back of you without realising that you're there or see you too late. Um, if you have your lights on, then they will see you. Let me go this way actually because it's a bit bit busy that way so now we're off the dual carriageway and I think there's a van a big lorry coming down the road so I'm just gonna wait here for him it looks like is he pulling in I think he pulled in for that car over there so when it comes to like meeting situations like this with uh, in the in the night time it's a bit trickier because you can't see the spaces as well as you can um, in the daytime so you can't see the spaces that you can park in but you can see the car's lights from early on so that should give you a bit more of a warning that somebody's coming down the road and you should start preparing for it it's also harder to see the layout of the road so sometimes you won't know that the road bends sharply towards the left until it's a bit late but if you use a sat nav the sat nav will show you the road layout before you even get there so that's another another even if you know the area well if you use a, a sat nav that can show you how the road bends before you even get there so you're more prepared um, and if you're not sure how the road is laid out best thing to do is just approach approach it slowly if it looks a bit weird or if it doesn't it looks like it's something that you haven't seen before best thing to do is just to slow down just checking for any lights coming through so I'm looking for any lights reflection in, in the cars as well so you because I would see that before the actual car comes through I would see the reflection on the other cars that are parked that will give me a, more, a little heads up um, that somebody's coming down turning right here still want to be using the same reference points for oh, yeah. Let me just say something about this light quickly. So that guy was indicating, but I couldn't really see his indicator properly until he got quite close. That's another thing about um, people when they have their lights on in the night time. Some cars, especially pre, uh, the Priuses that they use for, for Ubers, I've noticed that the indicator is very close to the light. So sometimes you can't even see that the person's indicating until, uh, until they get really close. So that can be quite can be quite dangerous especially on roundabouts when they're indicating to turn right and you're supposed to wait for them but then you don't see that they're indicating so at night time even buses as well some of them have got indicators that are really close to their headlights pay more attention to what people are doing in terms of the indication make sure you know exactly where they're going before you commit It's going to be harder to judge the spacing as well at night time in terms of how much space do you have for you and the oncoming vehicles uh, if you're not sure about the spacing best thing to do is just to stop um, or slow down a lot so you can 
have a better idea of how big the space is. Uh, in the daytime it's easier, but in the nighttime it's going to be much harder. So like here I can tell for instance, this is lots of space here. I've got enough room. If another car was coming, they would have enough room as well. Uh, but if a, vehicle, like a big, big bus came through, then maybe I will have to slow down a bit just to make sure that there's no one. Or make sure that there's space there. So we're coming up to a situation here. Remember, it's dark. I can't really see what's going on properly there. I know there's two buses next to each other. Now the bus is moving off. Uh, both of them are moving off. And now it's clear. Uh, we've got pedestrian crossings as well. Very easy to miss people here that are crossing. Especially if they're wearing dark clothes. So if you're a pedestrian and you want to keep yourself safe, best thing to do is wear bright clothes at night sometimes not very fashionable but it will help drivers to see to see you okay I'm just looking here see where these guys are going I want to go to the far right lane over there it's quite busy I'm not gonna rush it there's quite a lot of traffic there I can see a gap now because that car was turning. Couldn't see his signal. I don't know if he signaled or not, but I wasn't taking that chance. Okay, just gonna keep left as we come off here. Just being careful with these guys, make sure they don't. Um... Okay, let's keep moving, guys. Good. Yeah, and you also want to build up your speed more gradually when it's uh, when it's dark like this. You don't want to zoom off because you can't really see much. And you're gonna get sometimes, unfortunately, you're gonna get big potholes that that just uh, they won't even appear. You just feel them, boom, boom, and then suddenly you feel like your car is breaking apart, and there's nothing you can do about it because you you won't have seen it. It's just that's something what you have to uh, you have to deal with uh, when you're driving around here. Here as well, I'm looking for any pedestrians just being because when there's traffic on that side, people might think, Yeah, I can cross now because that traffic's not moving that fast. They're not really thinking about us or thinking about traffic coming from this side, so just be careful of that. Whenever there's traffic and there's a pedestrian crossing on the other side, just be careful of people uh, crossing thinking that it's safe on both sides. So sometimes I even look through here as I'm going through, through the bend, I'm not just looking through the main screen because then this, this pillar here blocks my view. So sometimes as I go through the bend, I'm looking through the side windows or just to see what's going on uh, in front of me really as I go through the bend. Because just looking through the screen sometimes won't be enough because this will be in the way. take the next road on the sorry we're turning left at the roundabout so center mirror left mirror signal left keeping in the left as you approach because I know I'm turning left keeping an eye on the right as well for any cars coming from there it's looking like it's clear right now so I can keep moving it's another pedestrian there with uh, dark clothes so I'm gonna make sure that we don't run them over taking the next road on the right so mirror mirror and then signal. So it can be harder to see as well or judge how far the cars are coming towards you. So that van that was just coming down the road before I turned, it's harder to judge how, how far they are. But there I could, see, as I got closer, I could see that it was far enough away. Uh, but if you're unsure, remember just to wait safer that way. You're not gonna be better off waiting because you don't wanna rush it and then end up making a mistake. So there I'm looking through the window here to see what's going on around the corner rather than looking forward there. Check my mirror before I come out. So here I've um, got another meeting situation. I'm hoping there's space on the left that I can pull into because this car is coming down the road. There is a space I can see on the left. Uh, he's flashing me. 
so I'm gonna carry on sometimes people flash you but I don't really mean come through so you just want to be um, I just want to be careful there I think I'm gonna park here I can't see much space up there so I'm gonna park here so remember I was saying to you before parking in the dark is a bit harder so I'm just gonna look around make sure it's safe first so when you're parking in the dark like this you won't really be able to see the pavement most of the time as you get close to it so because it's so dark I can't see the pavement right now so I'm just gonna do my best to get close to it or what's what I sometimes do I go really slowly until I can fill the pavement with my with my back wheel then I know I've gone back enough so like there I can feel it I can't go any more back now so I'm just gonna go forward a tiny bit turning the other way and then put into reverse again and then turn full lock up to the right and then go back into the space so I can now now I should be in enough I'm just gonna straighten up by going a bit more forward and then we come back and reversing back so now I should be quite close to uh, the pavement without going over the line and just to check I can open my door and see the line there so I'm inside and that should be it so on your test you're not going to get asked to park in a tight space like this this is more for once you pass your test and you want to do you know I would say real life driving because you do have real life driving in the test as well but when you get your own car you cannot be having to park in spaces this tight and sometimes the only way to do it really is to touch the curb see just have a feel of the curb with your back wheel and then go forward to adjust it and then correct it to finish off so that is it i hope you guys found that useful i'll probably do another one like this in a different area just so you can get different feel of how to drive in the night in different places and do different things so until next time guys thanks for watching bye